later on, after I had the Dr. Mastermind thing out and I was doing comedy, I decided my comedy routine was totally about making fun of heavy metal people. <laughs> That's Madison Avenue. And uh, this one, <laughs> it was pretty funny because I totally talked like a this guy named Doug Drug. You might know, know him. I knew him from high school. And I'd say, wow, man, it's, it's time a guy talks on him, so the girls are going to have to leave the room now. And I made a little, I made the first clip for Dream Club USA. Now, a little funny backstory is Jeff Horton, <laughs> he was bald as an orangutan, so he went to Hair Club for Men. And all of a sudden he had long hair and uh, very expensive. But uh, it was kind of a joke on him and a joke on the the whole hair metal stuff, glam crap, which uh, <laughs> I got great laughs at the comedy clubs. In the rock clubs, it didn't go over. We had no money. We used the library for entertainment because they had movies. So what if they're old? They're free. <clears throat> and books. I read a lot, a lot of books. And the downtown Portland library was full of stuff. So we'd get, you know, 10 videos and keep us going for the week and take another bus trip down to the downtown and get new videos. And I learned about a lot of people. Like Ernie Kovacs. I had no idea who he was. Funny story is my uncle Homer Welsh... Uh, he was on NBC Radio here, then got a job in Burbank on NBC as a radio guy when radio was king. He got offered a TV show, and it was Ernie Kovacs' spot. And he said, television is a cheap science experiment. It's not going to last. Nothing will ever replace radio. Boy, was he wrong. And I've learned a lot from that, so... <laughs> But Ernie Kovacs, I would never, never know about him unless I was totally broke. And so much other stuff, because I was broke and couldn't afford entertainment, the library gave me an education and a lot of entertainment. So uh, this is during that period where we were always shooting something. Okay, take it, roll it, spin it, boo.